You really don't need to master this tool. Yet if you are a maker or tinker, learning how to make good solderings is a very useful skill. It's not just about electronics, but also small metallic parts such as jewelry or models. But here's the thing, it's not just a matter of tools, it's how they are used. And whether you use a teeny tiny or very large soldering iron, the basic concepts for a good job are the same. Before going forward, a warning tip, because the tip of the soldering iron is really hot. So my tip is to be careful not to touch the tip. So let's dive into the key factors that make the difference between a good job from a sloppy one. First off, choose the right tip for the job. A smaller tip for a piece with large mass wouldn't be able to locally bring the temperature at the required level. The solder wouldn't wet the part or may not even melt at all. You see here the solder didn't wet the part and can be easily removed. Conversely, a large tip may burn the flux or the part or would simply make it impossible to reach small spots or a large puddle could be created causing short circuits. can't even <laughs> solder a single pin. <laughs> Look at this mess. I also melted <laughs> the, the plastic here. A temperature controlled iron is ideal, but even a power regulated iron is good enough uh, to prevent uh, burning uh, the flux or having cold solder that uh, doesn't wet well. Flux is what renders soldering possible. While the surfaces must be clean and shiny, the flux keeps oxygen from reaching the surface and being slightly acidic, it not only prevents oxidation but also removes the thin layer of oxide that every metal develops when in contact with air. Acidic means that there are hydrogen-free radicals that are very eager to pick oxygen atoms, removing them from the oxides and making them pure metal much easier with this big boy yeah nice in many cases the flux is already embedded inside the soldering wire and this brings us to talk about the solder the um, solder wire quality and type is very important uh, nowadays it is often available lead free solder wire that is made of uh, tin and uh, pure tin and uh, a little bit of, of silver uh, but it is uh, really hard to work with uh, and it is necessary when you solder uh, circuit boards that are lead free the easier to work with are solder wires that have uh, an alloy that are made of an alloy of 40% uh, lead and 60% tin and these are easier to work with uh, and produce good results. It is also sometimes a viable uh, solder wire that uh, is made of uh, an alloy of 50 and 50% 50 of uh, lead and tin and uh, why these uh, are pretty easy to work with uh, the result the final result uh, is uh, not very good and um, it is important to remember that uh, lead free solder is mandatory when the joint, the solder joint, uh, comes in contact with the food because, you know, lead is toxic. And this is another important tool. It is an aspirator and you can do it yourself with a, a simple fan, a grid to prevent uh, your finger be chopped and uh, a piece of um, activated carbon sponge. And this is the same made for uh, the aspirators of uh, kitchen hoods uh, so it's easy to source uh, at uh, the hardware store and uh, beneath the, the fan uh, some rubber feeds so uh, it doesn't transmit vibrations uh, to the bench uh, and it is important to have uh, an aspirator because you know it is not that healthy to breathe the fumes that comes from melting solder and also a stand or a vise come handy to hold the parts that need to be soldered okay so far we've seen the tools now it's time to see how to solder avoiding mistakes first step are just uh, 
the power for the job uh, you have to do smaller parts uh, adjust for a little bit less power if you are larger parts adjust for maximum power if you have uh, the temp adjustable temperature adjust for the temperature uh, this would take a little bit of practice uh, with some experimentation we see with what is the good amount of power for the job or adjust the temperature accordingly with the temperature required by the solder you have then let the tip uh, warm up uh, at the right temperature make sure to have a tip cleaning pad this is a, a, a silicone sponge that is soaked with uh, a bit of uh, demineralized water it is not advisable to use tap water because it contains salts I don't recommend to use wool brass because it tends to be abrasive to clean your tip uh, never use uh, sandpaper or other scratching tools like a knife because this would ruin the plating of the tip in fact tips are made with a core that is made of copper and then they are plated with iron and then uh, nickel here to the very tip and uh, chromium here on the remaining part of the tip this is to prevent the prevent prevent tin to crawl above this point and um, here this tip is not that visible the difference between the uh, nickel part and the chromium part this is important because if the tip is made just of copper when the tin melts uh, the copper atoms would migrate inside the tin the, inside the tin basically making the tin an alloy of uh, a, a bronze alloy of tin and copper of course the amount of copper inside the tin is really really very really tiny but over time this would cause a sort of corrosion it's not a corrosion because it's just a migration of copper but uh, it, you will see something like similar a corrosion and you can make yourself uh, a cleaning pad out uh, of a uh, cotton tissue folded uh, several times uh, so it uh, can absorb water but it is important to use only 100% cotton because uh, if there are uh, synthetic fibers and they will melt in the case the, the pad becomes dry and uh, instead as you can see uh, pure cotton doesn't melt and doesn't burn uh, that easy okay be sure the parts to where uh, to solder are clean and uh, free from oxides uh, with uh, a bit of uh, some paper or you can make it clean and shiny if you use flux uh, put plenty of flux uh, on the parts uh, that uh, on the joints that uh, must be soldered however i prefer the flux that is inside the solder now just before soldering clean the tip of this iron so the, it is shiny and clean then put the tip uh, on the part uh, that you have to solder and wait one or two seconds uh, and then add a little bit of solder okay this is not very good we take a, a little bit of time practicing a little bit uh, you will see how long you have to stay clean again the tip uh, if uh, there is uh, excess of solder now here you can see you can see what does it mean the wettability of the the solder can wet the part uh, you can see there is a we let the heat can see that uh, the the solder literally wet the the part uh, like uh, if it was water 
of course then it becomes a little bit uh, uh, sticky a little bit uh, dense and this is normal after a while uh, because this uh, removes the flux if I add uh, a more solder with the flux uh, you will see it becomes fluid again now to join the parts together just uh, melt the solder that are really there it is already there and stay after melting this very well stay there stay there so it solidify very well now if you have uh, an excess of solder you can use a, a, a solder pump to remove the excess before we wet uh, contacts uh, with a bit of solder enough to attach the wires let the wire the tip of the solder melt the, the, the solder wait a second and the soldering is done and here you can notice this joint is not that good uh, you can see here the wires not well attached to the to the prong of the switch so this must be done must be redone with a little bit more of solder right and this is strong and here we are going to solder uh, component uh, on the circuit board we just put the tip of the solder there let's uh, wait the solder a little bit uh, and wait a minute and, uh, and that's it as you can see the solder is perfect don't worry if at the beginning your soldering's won't come up very well it's normal it takes a little bit of time and exercise and uh, in many cases it's just a matter of timing don't be too hasty nor linger too much with the tip of the iron on the joint to solder and uh, with some exercise i'm sure eventually you will master soldering so for today that's all folks thanks for watching <laughs>